What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and today, well, we're going to be going over Lord of Fear Aspen, who I'm going to coin as undeniably one of the most useful heroes in just about every game mode there is. Uh, he can be used as a damage dealer, more importantly, he can be used as an insane support to your main damage dealer, whether it's Mockman or Vulcan, he does synergize very well with Mockman because, you know, there's a thing called Seal Land and they do very well together, uh, but this hero is absolutely busted and has has like when he came out he was like he was like good now though especially with void campaign and all these other game modes that have four heroes in the back line for enemies i should be specific in the back line he is absolutely insane so ours of course is completely tricked out even have giant killer for the upcoming star expedition that you guys We'll see some really cool stuff with. Uh, but his basic attack is really, really strong. And I think that's one of the reasons why he is one of the strongest Transcendence heroes. Because if you have a really good basic attack in this game, it just makes it so much better. Because you can use almost any type of artifact on him and still be useful. Basic attack targets the entire back row of enemies, dealing damage and reducing their control immunity by 18% for three rounds. Synergizes very well with Starwing Jara attacks as well with a 75% chance to inflict Fear Abyssal Gaze on them for two rounds. Afterwards, increases his own self-crit rate by 24%. That's really awesome. Um, the other parts of the basic, not really that great. Uh, the Noble Sublimation is good, though. Additionally, reduces target's damage reduction by 5%. I mean, so you're lowering control immunity, damage reduction. Those are just, like, those just are amazing. Absolutely amazing. And this Fear Abyssal Gaze is his bread and butter. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. His second passive is whenever an enemy dies, increases self-crit damage by 35% with a 100% chance to inflict fear gaze on all enemies. This is why he can be a deadly enemy in Void Campaign as well. Uh, of course, there's some other parts of it when it's triggered, additionally increases self-crit and reduces the crit of the enemies that are not feared. Now, one thing to remember with Fear Abyssal Gaze, enemies who are affected by it can't use basic attacks and cannot crit so even if they have an active ability they cannot crit which is why he's a dangerous enemy in the lair campaign in um in the force wars which is just absolutely insane his last one source of fear is very 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 important especially for sublimations whenever an enemy is inflicted with fear restore self hp equal to 12 percent of max hp and 25 energy and increases self attack to uh by 10 percent for three rounds and control immunity by seven that's a lot of things that's happening right there the big one is increasing his own energy at the end of each round reduces the energy of all enemies with fear by 50 that is huge so you prevent them from using actives and then you lock them down with the fear effect meaning that they can't use basic attacks uh with a 30 percent chance to reduce an extra 50 percent that is amazing uh, this can increase the duration of the attack buff from three to four rounds. And most importantly, the noble sublimation here at the end of each round inflicts energy oscillation for every one energy the target has. It deals additional damage. This is amazing with the draining of the energy, basically 50 guaranteed if they're feared with an additional 50 at a 30% rate. Now that's not it because his active ability hits like a truck and does some amazing things as well. Deals 1200% attack damage to a single enemy prioritizing the target that's across from them in the same position most of the time in a lot of game modes you want to put him against a boss which is very very important uh hits him two times and inflicts fear abyssal gaze for three rounds after the attack if the target's hp is lower than 40 percent deals 1200 percent attack damage two additional times and restores self hp equal to 1200 or 120 percent of the damage dealt this attack has one big characteristic demon king's might if the attack kills the enemy it deals an additional 1200 percent attack damage Damage to all enemies and then after this attack deals extra damage uh or it deals extra damage to enemies in the same exact position of him so those things already sound amazing but he is one of the best boss killers in the game which you will see highlighted here this week with star expedition and again you want to go for them 
when they're below 40% HP to maximize your damage if you're really pushing progression. Uh, Demon's King Might is the important part. <laughs> As the Lord of Fear, Aspen deals harsher damage to the enemies who dare to challenge his majesty. For bosses who cannot be inflicted with fear effects, Aspen deals extra 120% of the damage dealt by this active skill to them and steals 30% of their attack. Now, a lot of times in PvE, you won't see a lot of enemies having very high attack values because of ticks that ticks kind of broke the mold and made it so that uh they just give them like a ton of all damage dealt and stuff like that so demon's king might is huge and of course pure sublimation increases its crit chance by 10 percent. that's cool trigger condition for extra damage is lowered or rather raised up to 60 percent hp and lower instead of the 40 percent that's pretty big and lastly uh inflicts fear abyssal gaze on all targets if uh if this uh gets i think if, if it kills the target i think that's what it is right uh, but the one thing with the Noble Sublimation is that it doesn't do it to all targets, it seems like. It just applies it to all targets in the same row. So, like, back row and front row. I haven't seen, like, a transfer back and forth. But this is definitely a hero you want to get, like, quite a bit of sublimations on. Like, because, honestly, his basic attack, just raising up the chance to uh, get that control immunity is huge. Uh, the active ability, absolutely huge as well. And then let's talk about gearing. So we, of course, went for the three-star resonance gear. Just go for a mix right there. There are a couple different ways to run him. Uh, speed attack is always great because if you want him going first, his core can actually buff your main damage dealers. We'll talk about the core in a little bit here. Uh, I do personally like crit crit attack as one of the most you don't want like one of those skill damage precision or skill damage holy damage like you use on vulcan or mockman that's not the one you want to use for him additional crit chance can be nice stacking with all of his other abilities you can get near to 100 percent now, Artifact, there's a couple different choices here. Number one, Rui is absolutely amazing on it. Makes him go really fast. An upgraded Rui Scepter at Splendid, especially, will make it so that you have the highest chance to apply your Fear Effect. Uh, and it's just an overall good good artifact if you're running him as a supporter now if you're going to be using him in tandem with star swordsman mockman for clearing seal land 30 you're gonna want to pop like a crown on him he's the tank to the star swordsman mockman keeps him alive a little longer lets mockman get all those hits off now if you're doing this solo because yes it has been done solo the way to run him is actually with melodic strings and you put him in the back row in slots four or five straight across from the boss and seal land and this will let you absolutely crush the boss with the additional 50 percent all damage dealt especially if a giant killer uh is just going to one shot the boss and that's important because the light boss that light dragon hits multiple times and can make surviving very very difficult so those are the three artifacts you're going to be using on him good majority of the time if you're running like some crazy pve content of course antlers cane is always the way to go now there's another thing that he can do with Rui scepter as well and that is he can get purgatory 200 yes completely solo he is an amazing hero uh you do have to run something a little bit different like a uh like like instead of running control purify you need to run like mark purify for the waves that you face amon ra and then you just gotta hope you don't get cc'd but he has a lot of built-in control immunity which is good and really really important as far as sublimations go usually i just run him damage reduction crit crit but you know there is some flexibility if you're running him super offense put instead of the damage reduction go for like precision or something like that really really smart uh the tree of course i mean priority number one is for most people as a supporter is probably the basic right here after that's the active and then this branch and then lastly if you really want to you can go crazy with this one here um pretty i mean this one can be useful too if you think you're going to be killing enemies off pretty quick to apply more abyssal gaze honestly i prefer the first one or the first passive as one of my most important ones he does have multiple skins one of them is an ace skin really good stats damage reduction hp and attack but he also has a more offensive skin which is the one that's harder to get this one is from christmas time attack control immunity but it has 10 percent additional crit damage which is absolutely awesome last but not least i want to talk about his core the noble core is amazing especially if he's a supporter and you get him to go first before your vulcan or your mockman or anything in the specific game modes at the beginning of the battle grants all allies one layer of devil armor this is amazing this is going to help you not get cc'd 
Florida Fear Aspen defeats any enemy, grants all allies an additional layer of devil armor immediately. So that's really cool. But if you're using them as a support, it's not going to happen that often. When an ally releases basic attacks or active skills to horrified enemies, Lord of Fear Aspen is going to additionally chase that target and attack them. That's kind of cool extra ping damage, especially if he is your main damage dealer and you have him like a giant killer version and build him offensively. When an enemy is horrified, increases all allies except himself, they're attacked by 4% and damage reduction by 3% for two rounds. So if you hit like all the whole back line, all four of them, yeah, you're stacking a lot of attack to your Vulcan, to your Mogman, whoever. And yeah, the Devil Armor, when a layer of Devil Armor increases uh, control immunity by 15% for three rounds, this effect decreases by 5% every round. So you're just constantly applying it. I personally use this in campaign as well. I made sure he went before my Vulcan and my Mogman. He gave them attack buff, and it was just absolutely devastating. So if you have any other questions, let me know what you want to know about him. He is, again, the most versatile hero. I'd honestly say he's one of the best second or third third transcendence heroes to build depending on your build order so definitely keep him in mind check out our tier list we talk about a little bit more in depth where he thrives the most and i'll see you guys next time